thank you, Jesus. 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 It was nobody but you, God. Hallelujah. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, hallelujah, you brought me over. Thank you, Lord. It was nobody but you, God. Nobody but you. When I was out um, taking Mama across home earlier, it was raining. I could barely see the lights. The street lights were out. It was nobody but you, God, that protected us. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody but you, God. Nobody but you, God. Hallelujah. And for that, I just say thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For God, you are worthy. Well, good evening, Pleasant Hill. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's so good to be here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And just welcome to our Bible study tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody but you who allowed us another opportunity to study your word. Hallelujah to your name, God. And we just thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Lord, you're awesome, God. You're wonderful, God. Hallelujah. You are marvelous, oh God. You are perfect in all of your ways, God. Hallelujah to your name. You are the great I am. You are the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. You are the great God. You are the great Jehovah. Hallelujah. You are the omnipotent God. You are the God who sees all. You are the God who knows all. Hallelujah. 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 And to God be the glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now, God, just to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your grace, God. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. Thank you for allowing us to go through this day, oh God. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Thank you for breathing life into us this morning or whenever you decided to wake each and every one of us up, oh God. We just say thank you. Hallelujah for truly it was nobody but you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Even when we have aches and pains in our bodies, God, there was nobody but you, oh God. Oh God, that just give us another opportunity, oh God. Just give us continuous grace, oh God. Lord, we thank you, nobody but you who can go on the cross, oh high, my, my God. Hallelujah, that we may have life and have it more abundantly, oh God. Hallelujah, it's nobody but you who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think about. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. And we just thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for allowing us to assemble yet again, oh God, in this Bible study, oh God. Lord, I ask right now that you just open up our hearts, oh God. Open up our ears, oh God. Hallelujah. And we just won't hear the word, oh God, but we will be doers, oh God, and we are applied, oh God, to our daily lives, oh God. And God, we just thank you, oh God. We ask that your word go forth, oh God. That it will go forth with clarity, with power, and with the anointing, oh God. And that it will just prick our hearts, oh God. It will encourage us, oh God. It will just give us a desire, oh God, to just want to study your word even the more, oh God. And God, I ask that you just be glorified in everything that will be done in this place, oh God. Lord, we already thank you for protection, oh God. You will protect us throughout this service, oh God. And we just say glory to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you know it was nobody but Jesus, come on and put your hands together. I said if you knew it was nobody but Jesus that brought you over, that when you was in trouble, he brought you over. Nobody, nobody but you, Jesus. I wish I had about two or three people just to wave your hand and say, nobody but you, Jesus. Nobody but you, Jesus. When I was in trouble, when I was sick in my body, mind ringing with pain, nobody but you, Lord. Well, if you're thankful that it was nobody but Jesus that kept you in your right mind, won't you slap your hands together and give him glory? Hello. Well, how many know that you're next in line? I say, how many know that you're next in line? Well, do me a favor all over this sanctuary. Come on and put your hands together. Come on.
for the song said, there's a blood in this house and it's waiting just for you then I'll be next in line I want my blessing too there's a blessing in this house and it's waiting just for you then I'll be next in line I want my blessing too you got to trust and believe have faith you will receive don't give up yet hold on and you can be next listen thou sure in this house and this waiting just for you then i'll be next in line i want my joy too that's sure in this house and this waiting just for you and I'll be next in line I want my joy to you You got to trust and believe Have faith you will receive Don't give up yet Hold on and you can be next I gotta tell you something else That's healing in this house And it's waiting just for you Then I'll be next in line house and it's waiting just for you then I'll be next in line I want my healing too you got to trust and believe have faith you will receive don't give up yet hold on and you can be next well I just need you to say this say I am I'm next can you help me say it I'm, oh yes I am, oh yes I am, been waiting in line on my miracle, been waiting on line, I'm next, I'm next, say you to your next, your next, your next. Encourage somebody to say you're next. You're next. You're next. You're next in line. You're next in line. You're next in line. Well, you got to trust and believe. Have faith you will receive. And don't give up yet. Hold on and you can be next. Well, if you know you're next, clap your hands together and do me one favor all over the room. Lift your hands and begin to open up your mouth and tell God something sweet in the atmosphere. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, we reverence your name, oh God. There's nobody like you in all of the earth. We thank you for being a rescuer. Come on. I said, we thank you for being a rescuer. Come on. Come on. We thank you for being a rescuer. Come on. There's nobody like you in the earth. And we give you glory even on a Tuesday night. Come on. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the praise. If it had not been for you who are on our side, where would we be? And we give you glory, Jesus.
Jesus. And I'm never, come on, never, 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 my responses. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. My response is come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, my response. We give you glory. Hey. We give you glory. For there's nobody like you in all of the earth. Nobody, 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 nobody. We search high, look low. Nobody, 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 nobody can hold me like you. Keep me like you, hold me like you, keep me like you, hold me like you, keep me like you, hold me like you, keep me like you, thank 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 you, you are God, 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 Nobody, 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 thank you for being a rescue. Come on and give God some praise all over the building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you come on and just bless the Lord for a moment? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know that he has rescued your life, can you give God some praise right there? Amen. Woo. Yes, God. Yes, God. Because you have rescued my life. Mm. Don't know what life would have been without you. Don't know where I would have been without you. Thank you for rescuing me. Thank you for throwing me a life raft and pulling me on in. Yes, God. Yes, God. They send some lifeboats, but you sent me you. They send some EMTs, but you sent me you. They send some emergency situations, but you sent me you. You have risked my life. Glory to God. Will you give our prayer warriors, amen, a great big hand clap of praise, our music director and our...
praise and worship leaders. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But you have rescued my life. Could have been a homemonger down on Fleming or another street. But you have rescued my life. Father God, we, we thank you on tonight, God. We bless you on tonight, God. We say how much we love you and how much we appreciate you on tonight, God. Could have been a crackhead down at Turtle Park, but you have rescued my life. Could have been an alcoholic sitting on a curb but you have rescued my life could have been mental dancing in the street but you have rescued my life could have been a murderer doing life but you have rescued my life so God, we thank you. God, we, we bless you. God, we do honor you for who you are in us. On tonight, on tonight, amen, I would endeavor not to hold you too long, but I do have a pressing word, and it might not sit easy with a lot of us, but just sit on it. If it don't speak tonight, it'll speak later. If it don't speak later, it'll speak before then. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we bless you. Father God, we adore you. Because you are God all by yourself. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the will in the middle of the will. You are the lily in the valley the bright and morning star so God on tonight we ask if you would take me down into your storehouse give me your word to give to your people bless their coming that it might not be in vain and do what only you can do touch our hearts and our minds and our ears to not only just hear your word God because we do a whole lot of hearing but cause us to be doers of that which you have written unto us. These are all things we ask in your daughters in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take your seats on tonight. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats on tonight. And if it's not real strange or real crazy to you, will you just shout out to God something? Will you just, I, 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 will you just shout? I, 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 know, I know it's weird. Glory, God! In the highest. Oh my God. Yes, God. I know it might be strange. I know it might be strange. But just shout up with the voice of triumph. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo! My, my, my. We read it now. We read it now. I, I, I just asked that so that you would loosen up just a little bit because sometimes when we tight, we might miss it. And I want you to be free to receive. Most times if we go to a football game or entertainment, we just get real loose and real free. And we just, everything that's out there, we grabbing it. But then when we come to God, sometimes we get kind of boxed in. We get kind of tight. 
And I want you to get real loose for God so God can move however he want to move. Shake however he want to shake. Shift however he want to shift. Do whatever he want to do. But you got to be loose enough. And that's why Paul said, loose that man. And let him go. So we want to be loose on tonight to receive what God has for us. And tonight I'll be in Acts, Acts of the Apostles, the 28th chapter verses 1 through 8 good evening Pleasant Hill good evening virtual world those who may be tuning in by YouTube or by uh, some other via means we thank God for you tuning in for those of you who are in the building we thank God especially for all of you as we maintain our seats and I know we normally stand for the reading of God's word but I'm going to read it a little slowly tonight and so that we can catch it and then I won't have to go through and explain it so in depth. Amen? In Acts the 28th chapter, starting at that first verse, my Bible reads on this wise. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed them no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, he laid them on the fire. There came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said unto themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom thought he had escaped the sea yet the vengeance suffers not to live and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm howbeit they look when he should have swollen and fallen dead suddenly but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Tonight, if I could just take a short subject, I want to talk to you tonight about snake bites. Just look at your neighbor real easily. You might have to kind of look under your eyes and say, snake bites. Look on the other side, even if you have to look across the aisle and over somebody's shoulders and just tell them snake bites. Um, I share this with you because our children just received prayer to go off to college and to go back to school. And unfortunately, in these environments in which we live, some of our children will get bitten. I'm going to say that one more time. We try to hold them close to prevent them from harm, from danger, and from other things. But unfortunately, in life, sometimes you just get bit. Now, I know most of you love your teeth. Most of you love your tongue. And every now and then, they have a disagreement. It might be over flavor. It might be over the texture. And every now and then, your tongue gets in the way of your teeth. And your teeth shows them who's boss. And they get bit. But I can guarantee you, no matter how many times your, tongue, your teeth have bit your tongue or your teeth have bit your cheek, Nobody have decided to cut their tongue out. Nobody have decided to rid themselves of their cheek, even though the bite hurt. But it was not unto death. Nobody went to the doctor or the dentist and said, because of this issue I have, I no longer have need of these teeth. They are so dangerous to me, I would rather not have them in my mouth because they've suffered me some danger, some harm, and some pain. 
I took some time this afternoon to go back and look up snake bites, and I don't want to tell you what it means because you know it means being bit by a snake. And I went back to look up what a snake was, and you know what a snake is, that little slithering creature. We often call him Satan, and we often call him the devil. Amen. That's where the original snake come from. But we look at life sometimes, and there are people who are I didn't say that you said that. I was just giving you an idea um, of the slithering type of people who are in this world. Um, sometimes you can tell they're snakes by their movement. Sometimes you can tell they're snakes by their tongue. Sometimes you can tell them they're snakes just by their action. Amen. The, um, when I did a little study, it said that there was over 8,000 people just in the United States that are bitten each year by a snake. 8,000 folk. Well, hold on. Can I help you? They said that's what was reported. So there's probably another 10,000 that didn't, re that didn't report it. They get bit by a snake. They go and do some old-fashioned medicine or whatever the case may be, going on to work. The ones that probably get promoted, I mean um, reported, are the ones who are venomous and wind up going to the hospital. But there are a lot of snake bites that never make it to the hospital. They just hurt for a season because he wasn't poisonous and we head on to work. But we were bitten. And it did hurt. Can I go a little farther? The CDC says, as well as the American Red Cross, to avoid snake bites, there are some precautions. And it, and it, and it, and it kind of intrigued me. I wrote it down. And there was four steps to avoid snake bites or precautions for snake bites. The first thing the CDC said, and that's the Center for Disease Control, they said one Leave snakes alone. You know it took me about 10 minutes to recover from that. Because some, sometimes just common sense is not common. They say, and these are doctors, scientists, chemists. And they said the best thing you can do to avoid snake bite, they went to elementary school, leave snakes alone. I thought they was going to give us some, you know, was way out there. And I was ready for it. And they said the number one thing to do is leave snakes alone. Two, they went a little bit farther and they said because snakes um, sometimes venture in tall grass, they said, number two, stay out of tall grass. That's where you find a lot of snakes. So it says, stay out of tall grass. We think the grass is greener on the other side, and that's where we want to go. But the CDC said, you ought to stay out of. Amen. This is deep, y'all, y'all. This, this is deep. Theologically sound. Number three, he says, they say, keep your hands and feet out of areas you cannot see. I'm saying these are doctors. These are folks who've done some studying of snakes. These are snake anthropologists, if that's a word. These are snake people. And they said, keep your hands and feet out of areas you cannot see if you want to avoid being bit by a snake. Okay, let me, let me go a little farther. And then lastly, the fourth thing they says is, be cautious and alert at all times when you are around rocks and woods. Be cautious and alert. You know you hunters. You know you are campers. You hikers. You rock people. They said those are areas where snakes hibernate. And even though it's snake season, sometimes they'll get under rocks and they'll stay there for a minute. And you've been out there camping all winter, all autumn, all fall. And all of a sudden the snakes start to coming out of their hibernation. And you thought it was a good spot to hide. Amen. And the snake says, that's been my home all alone. I just allowed you to stay here for a season, but now I'm coming to take over. And so it says, stay, be cautious and alert at all times around rocks and around woods. I went further. Now, I'm not from CDC, neither am I from the Red Cross, but I thought I might add one to the list. And so Dr. Whitaker, with all of his initials behind his name, used his intellect and said that the fifth step that they forgot about was, a snake is not a pet. Do not play with snakes. 
I, 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 just, I just added that. Now, now, now don't y'all go tell nobody CDC said that. Uh, Pastor Whitaker said, a snake is, even though some people got them in aquariums, they got them in their bed, they got them, a snake is not a pet. Do not play with snakes. If I go a little farther, um, the Bible, when it was talking about Paul, Paul starts out one of the greatest writers in the New Testament. And Paul wants us to understand that if we want to reign with Christ, watch this, we're going to have to learn how to suffer with him. A lot of folk want to reign, but they don't want to suffer. Sometimes Christ will put you in situations that causes you to suffer that others may benefit. Now, Pastor, I didn't like that at all. But that's how the Bible reads. Sometimes God will cause you to be in situations and in predicaments that may not seem beneficial to you, but somebody else may benefit from your suffering. What you went through, somebody else may not have to go through. Okay, okay, Pastor, you'll make me have to go back and talk about this thing. We are persecuted for righteousness' sake. We want to reign with Christ, but yet and still the Bible says we have to learn how to suffer with him. There's no way in the world we can be with him if we don't want to be like him, and he suffered all things. Glory to God. Watch this. If I can benefit somebody else, why not make the sacrifice of my life for them? Most folks, I don't care about them enough. I don't, I don't love them enough. But the Bible says love is when you will lay down your life. Come on, somebody. Lay down your life for a friend. And so we might have to give up something so somebody else can receive something. We may have to go through something so somebody else can benefit from what we've gone through. How do, do you think Rosa Parks got the benefits of her sitting on the front of the bus? She got beaten and ridiculed and scorned, but guess what? Now today we benefit from the struggle, the sacrifice, the suffering that they went through. You ain't had dogs and water hoses, but we benefit from other folk who had to suffer. Am I screaming? It's, it it, it sounds like I'm screaming, but, it, but, it's, but it's good, so y'all just let me roll with it. Chapter 28 is the last chapter of the book of Acts. When Paul gets to this particular chapter, Paul is really have spent now some 20 to 30 years of going through when they first said, you shall receive power when that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Amen? And you shall be witnesses unto me. Um, um, that's in chapter 1. Verse 8, you shall be witnessing unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. It just didn't mean at this moment, for the rest of your life, you're going to witness to me. And sometimes being a witness to me means you're going to get in trouble. Paul is only doing what God has called him to do. And by doing what God called him to do, he finds himself now in jail. Not only is he in jail, they can't find out what he did except for preach the word of God. And Paul said, I can't help but do what's in me. I can't. Okay. Anybody ever had the I can't help it? Some, sometime if it's in you, you just, you just got to be who you are. You just got to do what you do. Paul said, I can't help but do what I do. That's how he created me. That's what's in me. And I can't go teach something else. I got to teach what he gave me. And if you do what I do, Paul says, you're going to be Okay. But they arrest Paul, they throw him in jail, and now because they can't do anything with Paul, they send Paul to what we call Rome, amen somebody, to be judged of Caesar. Now he's got to go be judged of Caesar because they can't find out what he's done wrong. And so now Paul takes a ship, and they carry him supposedly to Rome, but we know about the shipwreck. We know about the angel that comes to Paul and says, hey, guess what, Paul? There's going to be a shipwreck. Guess what, Paul? There's going to be some trouble. Guess what, Paul? There's going to be a storm. But the good part about all of this, Paul, no one shall lose their life. You're going to lose the boat. You're going to lose some stuff. But no one shall lose their life. And we know Paul was shipwrecked, got to the uh, coast on pieces of board. Now, this is what really bothers me, and I hope you get it on tonight. When Paul gets to the place that they call Malta or Melita, this is a nation of barbarous type people. People who don't speak the same language that Paul speaks. People who don't know the same culture that Paul knows. But the Bible says this, and this is just fascinates me. These are the natives of the island, and the Bible says, watch this, the barbarous people show them no little kindness. These are people who normally eat people. These are people who normally kill people. A boat wreck, prisoners show up on your shore, and you show them 
no little kind. I mean, you go overboard for them. Amen? You roll out the red carpet, in lack of a better term, for these prisoners who just shipwrecked on your island. That, that, that bothered me for a season. And the Bible said because of the prison rain and because of the prison cold, they started a fire. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get it. No, no, no. The Bible said because of the present rain and the cold, they started a fire. Most folk, when they talk about this, they say, like, Paul started the fire. Paul didn't start no fire. The Bible says they, because of their kindness toward them, knowing the present rain, ooh, it, like it was raining today, and the cold, they started a fire. Watch this, watch this. I'm, I'm halfway intelligent, y'all. I can understand a fire in the cold. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I'm, absolutely, I'm okay with that. What I don't understand is a fire in the rain. Now, folk would have thought me crazy that's good English. Folk would have thought me crazy if I had went out there when the rain was coming down 30 minutes ago and started gathering sticks and ice for a lighter. They would have took me on the Phoebe. That, I don't care whether you pass in Pleasant Hill or not. Pick him up. Something going on. Watch this, watch this. Can I back up just a second? I can understand the fire in the cold. Got it. I cannot understand the fire and the rain. Will somebody help me? I read it five or six times and still didn't get it. What the Holy Ghost says is, because of their kindness, because of their extraordinary faith, they could do something in an environment that normally wouldn't be done. But watch this, watch this. Most folk wouldn't have even thought about starting a fire. But because it was raining and they were cold, rain is good for cold because it brings, I mean, um, fire is good for cold because it brings heat. But how do I do it if it's raining? Rain would normally put out a fire. I just trust, watch this, I didn't say God, I just trust enough because I love enough and have faith enough that if I do it, it'll happen. They created a fire in the rain. Nothing in this Bible says God said or God did, or as the Lord spoketh or speaketh, they created a fire in the rain. But watch this, not even, the next part that really kills me, and my wife don't like it when I say it like that, but the part that really kills me is the fact that Paul now sees the fire and he joins in by gathering sticks to put on the fire. You ain't, you ain't got that yet. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to teach this in the empowerment class because I'm gonna have to go a lot slower. Paul joins in by gathering sticks to put on the fire. Watch this, watch this. When you got folk who got so much faith and can do the impossible in an area where it should not be done or in an environment or an atmosphere that is normally not done, I'm joining. I'm joining in. When you got folk that got enough faith that say, I can start a fire in the rain, I want to be with them. Dana, you don't have to wait till the stars line up and everything is in the right direction and everything is in the right place. But they said, we'll start a fire in the rain. And Paul says, guess what? If you got that much faith, <laughs> I'm with you. Paul gathers sticks to add, not start, but to add to the fire. And the Bible says, when he went to put the logs or the sticks on the fire, a snake bites him on the hand or fastens to his hand. Understanding this story, most of us, and I'm just seeing it in my mind, would have freaked out, passed out, took off running. You'd have ran back to the boat, even though there ain't no boat. You'd have been going somewhere. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have stood there with a snake on your hand. Not as an American. But I'm, I'm concerned and I'm curious that most folk thought the snake came out of the fire and bit Paul on the hand. 
as I read the text, the snake wouldn't have stayed in the fire because the snake would have died. I'm believing the snake was with Paul in the sticks. As Paul brought the sticks or the wood to the fire, and when he went to put the wood on the fire, the heat acknowledged the snake, and the snake came out and bit him on the hand. Does that, does that make sense? Watch this, though. Watch this. Why he was carrying the sticks, the snake didn't come out. Why he was gathering sticks, the snake didn't come out. The snake is laying dormant. Some folk are carrying snakes and don't even know it. Some, some folks are walking around with snakes. As long as you're carrying the snake, the snake is cool. But when you put him on some fire, when you heat things up, that's when the snake going to wake up. But as long as you just carry him around, he's comfortable. He might be in your purse, might be in your pocket, but as long as you carry him, he ain't going to do nothing. But as soon as you put some Jesus on him, some Holy Ghost on him, some fire on him, then he will wake up. Not only will he wake up, he'll bite you. Not only will he wake up, but he'll bite you. And so he's been laying in the sticks. He's been laying in the debris. We're under construction, and there are some snakes laying in the lumber. There are some snakes laying in the bricks. There's a, and until you start, woo, thank you, Holy. Until you start to build something, he was building the fire. Until you start to build something, the snakes don't move. But as soon as you start to build something, now all of a sudden snakes show up. Huh. Snakes will show up if you start to build something. They begin to build a fire. They look forward. Now watch this, watch this. These nice, these kind, these are real courteous, barbarous, native people. Watch how they change their nature. They kind of they nice nasty, if I can use that terminology. They, they out there helping them. They're the courteous folks in the world. They're doing everything. And then all of a sudden, the snake bites Paul, and they say, oh, this murderer. Did, did y'all read it? This murderer, he escaped the sea, but now the snake done got his butt, and he going to die. <laughs> he going to die by the snake bite. What? did I not tell you that these folks were courteous? Showing them, you know, no little kindness. Now all of a sudden the snake bit him and now he's a murderer. Watch this. This is Terry 101. You're not going to find this in theological studies. Um, but I just believe, watch this. How did they know he was a murderer? They just come off a ship. Shipwrecked. Headed to Rome. Wind up in Melita. And the barbarians folks said, he a murderer. How, how did they determine he was a murderer because he's a prisoner? They don't even speak the same language. Terry just believes folk be talking. <laughs> Political 101 just said folk be while Paul was over there trying to fix a fire, there were some other prisoners over there. Hey, you know why he in here? You know why he did it? They, they didn't understand the same language, but they was over there talking about, what, however you do kill, however you do kills, they, they like, he done killed, he done killed somebody, y'all. The other pri you're not going to find that in, 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 in the Bible, but I just believe somehow, because he's shipwrecked. He's never been to Melita. They just got there, built them a fire, and now they're calling him a murderer when before they were showing him all kind of kindness. Some of the nice, nasty Christians in the church. You speak to me when I come in the door, but then when you see me praising the Lord, and I don't praise him like you praise him. When you see me praising the Lord, and I don't shout when you shout. Hmm, look at her. She just trying to show off. She just, I, thought, I thought you welcome me in. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to where the spirit is free. And now you're over there with your nose poked up. Being nice and nasty. I'm, oh, okay, stick, stick with the lesson, Pastor. Stick with the lesson. All I'm saying is, they didn't know Paul in that way except somebody. Done sh you know, Paul, Paul, got one. However, they identified it. And so now Paul is a murderer. But watch God. 
No matter what folks say about you, God will vindicate you. No matter what folks think about you, God will vindicate you. They sat there and watched Paul being bit. And the Bible said they waited a while to see what would happen with him. Paul didn't swell up. Paul didn't pass out. Paul didn't die. Then they said, no oh, wishy-washy folk, he must be a god. My thing is, they were close. He is not a God, but God is in it. They were close. He is not a God, but God is in control. They were close. He is not a God, but God is handling all the things that are going on around him. So guess what? They were close, but Paul is not a God. The Bible says Paul shook off the snake. Folk are looking at you wondering how you still living how you still making it? Out of all the snake bites that you had in life, folk were waiting for you to pass out. Folk were waiting for you to fall out. Folk, matter of fact, they were waiting for you to swell up. They, 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 they still watching. Oh, she got out of the car. She ain't swollen up yet. Amen. They, they know you've been bit, but they waiting for you to pass out. And you keep showing them wrong because you keep showing up. They know you've been bit, and you keep on showing up. You keep on. You ain't acting like they thought you would act. You still smiling and shaking hands. Talking about God is a good God. And they waiting for you to disappear. Watch this. Watch. And then the Sunday that you disappear. The Sunday that you do disappear. They don't call Phoebe. Did she admit herself? We done drove her crazy. Just, just to find out. <laughs> you on a cruise. You on, you on, you on vacation. A amen. They thought you done swole up, but you out there turning it up. They thought you were dead. You out there dancing. They all messed up because they thought they had you. Just because you've been bit. But prove, prove the devil wrong. Prove, prove the devil wrong. Show the de Ooh, let me turn these pages. Show, 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 the, show the devil that he has no power over what God is doing in you. Paul shook it off. And even when we preach the sermon about shaking it off, that's what we have to do. When things bite us, don't pass out even though it hurt. Shake it off. When things don't go the way you want them to do and it just bites you, your children bite you, you sometimes bite you, learn how to shake it off. So that thing won't kill me. The good part about these venomous snakes that bit Paul, they were doing something that was uncommon unusual. Well, pastor, why do you say that? Because a venomous snake, if you study snakes, they don't usually hang on to you. A constrictor, like a boar constrictor or an anaconda, they will bite you and hold you because they constrict their prey so that they can devour it or so they can eat it. But a venomous snake, if they bite you, they only bite you, inject their venom into you, and release you and let the venom do the work. But in this case, this venomous snake, the Bible says, bites him and fastens itself onto him. I wonder why snakes are doing crazy things that snake culture wouldn't even say that they would do. We are like that sometimes. Christians are doing things that Christian culture say they shouldn't do. God is setting you up. Why as a Christian you doing stuff that normal Christians wouldn't do? And now a venomous snake is doing things that snake behavior says it ought not do. But God is setting it up so much so that you can see that the power of God is at work and not man. Because if he had just bit him and took off, folk would have said, oh, maybe he didn't inject no venom into him and, you know, that's why Paul went on about his business. But the Bible says it held on to him to ensure you can see it and know that he's been injected with venom, and so he should have died. He should have swole up. When she came at you, you should have died. You should have swole up. You should have been, can I say, thrown off, mad, teed off, turned around with an attitude. Hallelujah. But you didn't. And she knows she was wrong. The snake knew it shouldn't have been, but the snake had a purpose. Watch this. The snake was mad. Because Paul was building something that could kill him. And so before you build something that can kill me, it's my job to kill you. Somebody didn't see that. 
the same fire that Paul was building, he shook the snake off in the fire that killed the snake. When the enemy know you building something that can kill him, the enemy is going to try to kill you. When the enemy know you doing something that's going to kill him, the enemy is going to try to kill you. When the enemy know that you are at work for God, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm closing, y'all. Watch this. There were over 200 people on this ship in prisoners that got shipwrecked that's now on this island. The snake chose Paul. He had a lot of other options. There was a lot of other people on the island besides Paul. I wonder why the snake chose Paul rather than somebody else. Anybody want to know the answers? And, 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 and trust me, now, sometimes I, I don't give you the total biblical answer. I give you Terry 101, and this is a Terry 101. I'll go back and give you the biblical answer in a minute. My thought process is, Dogs don't bite parked cars. The snake didn't bother nobody else because nobody else ain't doing nothing. And if you ain't doing nothing, the snake ain't worried about you because Paul is doing something. He's moving. He's, he's Because Paul was making it happen. Dogs don't bite parked cars or bark at parked cars. I don't care how many times you walking by. If the car ain't moving, the dog ain't barking. But now you let a car go down the road. That dog will lose his, he'll run away from his master to try to get that car. But as long as that car is parked, he might, on the tire, <laughs> yeah, he might do his business on the tire, but he ain't going to be barking at it. And the snake, if you ain't doing nothing, he ain't trying to bite you. If you ain't making nothing happen, he ain't even after you. So he's after Paul because Paul is making stuff happen. He's after Paul because Paul is doing something. And when you ain't doing nothing, the devil don't care. But as soon as you get busy of doing, well, pastor, what is he doing? Watch this, watch this. They said that the, um, the governor of the island the highest ranking officer on the island invites them to his home for three days. Treats them well. Watch how God set this thing up. All of a sudden, the Bible says, his father is sick with the fever and with the flux. The flux is, the, the bloody flux is dysentery. And so he has a double illness that they can't cure. But Paul comes in. Watch this, watch this. God is just a good God. The same hand that was bitten, it's the same hand that's now blessing. The same hand you thought you were going to kill me with, it's the same hand that now I'm doing the work of the Lord with. The same hand that you thought was going to take me out, now God is bringing me in. Paul takes his hand and lays his hand on the Father. They said the Father was healed. I'm closing. And, 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 and this is just boggles my mind because watch this watch this they landed in Melita but Melita was not their destination it, it must be raining y'all slow tonight they landed in Melita but Melita was not their destination do I need I'm going to say it one more time they landed in Melita, but Melita was not their destination. God caused a storm to take you to where he wanted you to go because there was work to be done, not for you, but for the people of Melita. God caused a storm. Some of y'all in church tonight because the storm pushed you in. God, God caused a storm to happen to them even though it wasn't a destination. It was confirmation that you were in the right direction. Whenever God is doing great work in you, a lot of folk would have said, oh, when I'm off my path or when I have to stop, that, that's a satanic move. The devil trying to block me. The devil trying to stop me. God stopped them to do work that God had them to do. But it was confirmation of what they were doing because they were still able to heal and deliver because God used Paul to heal 
the man who was sick. And then watch further. I didn't read the further part of it, but he said then Paul began healing all of them folk. Amen. They start bringing, they thought Paul was like Jesus. They just start bringing sick folk, hot folk, all kind of folk. They just start bringing them and thought Paul just laying his bit hand. <laughs> Paul just laying his bit hand on folk. And they getting healed. They getting, do, okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. And then I'll quit. Do you know what makes an antivenom? They take venom from the snake and uses it to make anti-venom. So the same thing could have killed you, God can use it to heal. I'm done, I'm, 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 I'm done y'all. Some, somebody didn't get that, I'm trying to help us because you think while folk trying to kill you, God will take the same scenario and heal you and deliver you and make you better than you was when you thought. Okay. There are a lot of snakes in church. And we can survive the snake bites. Uh, there are cobra snakes. That's the broad back snake. That's the snake that's got his head up thinking he the baddest thing around. That's the arrogant snake. That's the snake who thinks he knows more than anybody. That's the snake who's just like, yeah, you come on, yeah, I got. He doing a whole lot of showing off and ain't doing nothing. Huh? He just bobbing, he just bobbing and weaving, but he ain't doing nothing. Um, when I was stationed over in Okinawa, they used to have what they call the Habus and Cobra fight. And this is a little mongoose, which is like a big rat and a snake. And I won't tell you how they usually go in. But the cobra, <laughs> after all of that bobbing and weaving, that mongoose is just waiting. That mongoose is just waiting. Pow! And it's the end of that story. And then there are rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes are just running around here making noise. <laughs> you just run around, just run around here making noise, and there ain't only two things that I know that rattle. That's a snake and a baby, and neither and, and neither one of them is good for ministry. If you still got a rattle, okay, okay, uh, okay, <laughs> it's time to it's time to grow up. Amen. If you still rattling, it's time to grow up. It's time to get mature in the Lord. Amen. So so that rattlesnake is just making noise, but it ain't doing. And then there's a copperhead. And most of y'all know what a copperhead is. All a copperhead do, they're going to start something, but they ain't going to finish nothing. They're going to start something, but they Matter of fact, they'll even push you up to something, but, but, but they ain't going to do nothing. You ever had, ever had anybody trying to push you into a fight? They ain't going to fight. They're going to keep their hand clean, but they trying to push you. They're going to get them. Well, you hit them first. That's a copperhead. All they're doing is pushing up stuff, and they ain't going to do nothing. And then there's a cotton mouth or a water moccasin. And they hang out in nasty places, muddy places, watery places. Be careful where you hang. Be careful who you with. Because them messy water marks, them messy copperheads, matter of fact, when, when the season is not right for them and they can't find food, they'll bite you. That's a, that's a copperhead. That's a water mark. Because they nasty and hang out in nasty places and want you to be with them. And then lastly, there's a coral snake. Coral snake is a pretty snake. Got luscious, vibrant colors. But those kind of snakes are in a clique. You can't be a coral snake unless you're part of my coral family. If you're not vibrant and colorful or part of my clique or part of my group, you can't be with us. Coral snakes are the ones who pull themselves together and don't worry about nobody else. So you're not part of the clique, you must be part of the clan. I just want to know I'm not part of the clique nor the clan, just part of the kingdom. And so, and, and so you, if you're not like us, you can't be a part of us. We got our own little group, our own little settings. And we get together in our own little den when ain't nobody else around. Because we are coral, pretty snakes. I just want to share with you all, just like they say about them dogs, all of them snakes are in ministry. And they all bite. But you have to learn how to survive a snake bite. You got to learn how to shake that thing off. You got to understand where God has placed you will take that venom and use it for your good. Will allow you to be sacrificed and suffer that somebody else might receive Christ. 
So don't mind if God use your life as a sacrifice. Don't mind if God use your testimony that somebody else might get the glory. All of these folks of Melita, of Malta, of this barbaric island, now knows the power that Paul has through Christ Jesus. Yet and still, my last, my last point is, why didn't Paul die from this venomous snake? Anybody know? Anybody know? The poison was not as powerful as the promise. The poison was not as powerful as the promise. The poison couldn't kill him because God had already told him his promise was that he would stand before Caesar in Rome. So no matter what happened to him prior to that was not going to kill him because he had already been given a promise that he was going to stand before Caesar in Rome. So when God gives you a promise, they can't deny God's promise. Will nothing that will happen to you that can kill you now? Because God has promised you later. So when God promised you you're going to Rome, I don't care what happened back here. God's promises won't be denied. That poison was not as powerful as God's promise. Will you give God some praise all over this building on tonight? Amen. Will you bless the Lord for snake bites on tonight? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, do me one big favor, do me one big favor as our children go off to college and go back to school there will be friends that will bite them there will be situations that will bite them we gotta teach them how to shake that thing off and not go into depression not go into a suicidal mode not go into a, revenge, a vengeful mode but learn how to shake it off and see the power of God come out on the other side amen Hallelujah. Give God one more great big camp of praise. Our first lady is coming with our invitation and our uh, announcements. But God is a good God. Just go ahead and bless the Lord one time like you're crazy. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 tonight are as follows. We have noonday prayer on Wednesdays at 12 o'clock and we invite you all to come out and just sit in God's presence and share a prayer with us or just um, enjoy prayers that are being lifted up unto the Lord. Also, we already know what's happening this weekend, right? Are we excited for Friday? Yes, I'm, I'm excited for Showtime on the Hill. It's going to be some acts that you've never seen before, but they're all going to be to God's glory. So we ask that you come out Friday, August the 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. for Showtime on the Hill. A blast from the past, present, and future. And then we will continue to celebrate our church's 154th anniversary on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And we're asking all the women to wear church hats on that Sunday if you have it. Do not go out and get in debt and do not not come because you don't have a hat. But we ask if you have one, you may come. We also had a few hats that was donated to the church and they're over there on that back row. So after church, if you need one or would like to get one of those hats, please feel free to just take them with you. Um, it was a donation and so we are thankful for that. And then keep in mind the outreach ministry new operating hours will start August the 24th and they will be open every fourth Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And before pastor returns, I want to just um, ask our congregation to keep a couple of members in prayer. Deacon Mason, who's home doing well. Mother Cross who's home doing well. They both had some procedures, but they're home and we thank God for their healing. And then also keep in mind, Kawanis Malone and her family on Saturday at 2 p.m. Her mother will be funeralized here. So we're asking that Pleasant Hill do what Pleasant Hill do, show up and support, show love. So Saturday at 2 p.m. for the funeral of um, Kawanis Malone's mother, we're asking all of our members to come and do what we do. Pastor will come back with any further announcements. Amen.
Amen, amen, and amen. Um, I just want to ask real quickly, amen, if you just make sure on Saturday, amen, that we have people in place, ushers and parking and things of that nature, um, because I'm going to be running real late to get here. Um, we have an, I have another funeral that's at Second Mount Zion um, at 11 o'clock. Uh, pastor Blue, the pastor of St. Stephen's, his wife, Mary, passed. That's the uh, sister of Pastor Theotis Drake. And so her funeral will be Saturday at 11 o'clock at Second Mount Zion out on Old Pretoria Road. So I'm going to be running, but I need to make sure we have people in place to make sure everything get taken care of until we get here. Amen. So um, I don't know if that funeral is going to run long, but knowing her and the people that she know, um, I'm guessing it's going to be a pretty long funeral. So we're going to do our best to be here on time so that we can accommodate uh, the family of Sister Kawandis Malone. So. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, let's govern ourselves accordingly and be prepared to do those things. But we're going to still have a good time on Friday night, amen, and we're going to have a good time come Saturday morning, I mean Sunday morning, amen? Amen. So um, if you need any uh, further instructions or some information, please call the Office of Administration, amen, that we can keep us running. And then will you put your hands together for Sister Mike Duffy, amen, who's our new custodial worker for the church, amen? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Let me, let me, let me, let me just help us out real quick. Amen. Uh, even though she worked for the church, she don't work for you. I, I just, I just, I just want to share that out loud, Amen. Because I know if there's some a spill in the foyer, Amen, or you know, some toilet paper that needs to be in the bathroom, folk gonna go running to her. But guess what? That's a deacon's responsibility. She work on through the week. When it's worship service time, like on a Bible study hour or a Sunday hour, don't run to her telling her about no spills down, no trash down, because then you gonna have to deal with me. Find my chairman deacon, my vice deacon, or one. And if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, they will address those issues. She, her, her work is don't nobody come to you after you get off from work, do you? Amen. Amen. So when she get off from work, don't be running to don't be running to her trying to tell her what to do. Don't be running to her. She in here trying to get some worship on her. You talking about I ain't no train no trap bags and and find your way to one of my deacons and they will get you a trash bag. Amen. And make it happen. Somebody done spilled some water. And figure out a way to get it up. Hallelujah. Y'all give some, y'all give God some praise. Y'all give God some praise for her. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for her accepting the position. And we know, we know, I mean, we love what Sister Hayes has done over the years. Amen. And we know we won't miss a beat. Amen. And the same. So we just want to thank God, amen, in doing so. Amen. Um, often y'all put all y'all money in the baskets when y'all get ready to leave here. I mean, just all your money. Put all your money in the baskets. When you go there to our website to, to give, just hit all. Amen. Do a re recurring all that. Anytime you get money, it'll just automatically just go. Amen. Just do a recurring all, and that'll satisfy everything that we're looking for. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then you can just say, go to all ministries. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Well, God bless you. God keep you as my prayer. If you have enjoyed Bible study and our prayer service and our worship service tonight, give God one more great big hand cup of praise. Let us stand to our feet to be dismissed. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for tonight. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you because you are God and God all, all by yourself. Now, God, we ask that you would just dismiss us from this place, but never, ever from your presence. We ask that you would hold us in the hollow of your hand. We ask that you would just continue to love on us and causing us to love on one another. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer.